This segment of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by AMG Network Hosting, LLC, a national independent agent for most major telecommunication service providers. If your business is in need of internet, phones, credit card processing, let AMG Hosting help you compare options. They work with over 100 national carriers and they can help you choose the best option for your needs. Our independence means we are loyal to our customers, not a brand or a company. Call us today at 304-608-3653 or visit us at amgnhconsulting.com. amgnhconsulting.com. Phone number again is 304-608-3653. AMG Network Hosting, LLC. guys here we are another segment live at cabela's 200 terrace boulevard south charleston west virginia doing uh, the vendor day event that they're having here promoting local and uh, american-made businesses and uh, food vendors we got a bunch of good food vendors here dave just chowed down on some hunt chef oh my gosh you better believe it buddy <laughs> how was that you. brisket there bud uh, amazing amazing <laughs> amazing <laughs> oh my goodness you got a nice bee there you got your little buddy yeah, I'm allergic <laughs> to those guys. You, you might want to get up and get him away from you. Maybe. So, <laughs> Dave will be right back. <laughs> Come on over here and get him for him, Jeremy. There we go. Jeremy saved the day. Bee killer. He don't just kill deer. He kills bees, too. <laughs> Man, <laughs> my hero. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got Chris Dunlap, Vice President of White Horse Long Range Shooting Range. And I also see there that you do outdoor education. So tell us a little bit about White Horse. Well, White Horse is a nonprofit organization. Okay. It's been in, you know, uh, it's been going on for about, probably close to 40 years wow um there's been a lot of time and a lot of effort a lot of donations uh to have a facility like we have and it's kind of a, a hidden gem in the in the middle of west virginia which yeah. it's right outside of buckhannon about uh, about six or eight miles something like that okay. um and you know um Education-wise, you know, it's there, there's the thing of, about shooting sports is people are usually, uh, for the most part, they're willing to help people that haven't shot before, yeah, or anything uh, you know like that. And the thing about Whitehorse is, it, it is a the property that is owned by the DNR. And it is leased to the uh, State Rifle and Pistol Association. Okay. Um, and is subleased to Whitehorse with the agreement that uh, they maintain a public shooting range. Okay. So Whitehorse maintains a public shooting range for the West Virginia DNR. And every day that it is open, Whitehorse has a range watcher there somebody to make sure and maintain safety uh wow that's awesome uh by volunteers yeah that is all volunteers there is there is no money given from the dnr whatsoever for for this facility yeah it's a um uh you know because most of the, the that's a big problem with most of the shooting ranges in not just in this state in other states too where 
people just go out and shoot the canopies up. They shoot the trash cans. They shoot. Yeah. They shoot everything, mm-hmm. and and tear stuff up. So that doesn't happen at White Horse. You you don't you just don't get to go there and uh, do whatever you want. Yeah. You're, you're going to obey the rules. That's good. Yeah. And uh, it's you know safety is number one. You you have to have safety on a shooting range. Yes. Period. Yes, you do. So. Um, also, uh, there's guys that I shoot with there. Uh, they take on people and become mentors to them. That's, that's basically how I got started, um, to, and, and I just, I just thought I knew a lot about guns and shooting and, and that aspect, but I, I found out that, uh, there's a, whole big old world out there <laughs> yeah. a big old rabbit hole and and i just keep it digging down in it yeah so. well that's awesome so that's one thing we want to make clear it's it, it is a public range and it's not a club right right it's not it is not a club okay but now we do put on uh, uh shooting matches uh we shoot um 1000 yard bench rest shoot 600 yard bench rest okay we shoot um 600 yard F class, which is where you lay on the ground uh-huh. and shoot off a rest. Uh, we shoot uh, a service rifle high power, which is you shoot out of a big leather coat and a sling. You don't shoot out of a rest. Mm. Shoot iron sights. Um, I I had a. He's talking about the education part of White Horse. I had a rifle team for about four or five years teaching them to shoot AR-15s at 600 yards open sights. Oh, man, that would be awesome. Um, and a lot of people say, well, 223 won't reach that far. Well, if they've never done it, they've never seen it, <laughs> they, uh, they, yeah. don't, they don't know. They don't you know, know yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it happens. Yeah. So, but, you know, that's, that's White Horse's goal. Yeah. And those are national shoots that you all have there too, yeah, right? Right. We're, as a matter of fact, um, Tiff, you know, asked me to come and do this, and actually today we're having our state championship there. Oh, okay. It's nice. going on today and tomorrow um, for bench rest from a thousand, and then she asked me to do this, which White Horse allowed me to do this on their behalf. So, because I can't shoot right now, mm-hmm. I've, I've had some some health issues and uh, had eye surgery, and I can't do like I did. So, yeah. so they they allow. You know, I'm the vice president. They said, "Well, sure. You know, you want to do that? Go ahead." So, th- I'm just I'm just trying to promote White Horse and and the shooting sports and and teaching and talking and promoting. Um, yeah, you, know, you don't have to shoot competition you yeah know, you know you just come and shoot you just know? come and shoot yeah there's and a, learn there's a uh, we have, we have a f class match that is uh 22 rifle 22 rivals 300 yards oh wow with a 22 just a fun match yeah i mean just and That's awesome. you, you know people think you can't hit nothing with 300 yards with a 22 well how do you know? You can't until you lay down there and and try and try, it. And, and try it, you know. That's uh, awesome. Well, it, they do they do a lot of competitions with twenty twos, don't they? I, no doubt the the PRS and the, uh, NRL yeah does this. They shoot out six hundred yards. That's uh, that's what I was thinking. I've seen it on TV before, and that's yeah. just with a twenty two LR. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It's, All it's, right. It's a big deal, man. <laughs> that's crazy. That, that is crazy, man. Um, but you know the 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 aspect of of the sh- the shooting sports, um, you know, I'm one of the young guys, and and, and I'll say this, this: as a matter of fact, today at the state championship, there's a gentleman there. He's come all the way from um, Missouri to shoot in our state championship, and he's 85 years old. Wow. Um, that's pretty good that it's drawing people from other states too. Is he was he from West Virginia originally no, no, or no? And he will be here 
uh, for the Nationals, which is Labor Day weekend. Okay. And Cabela's is helping to sponsor that. Nice. Uh, uh, Tiff will be there, and uh, they'll have a canopy set up for you know Cabela's, and they're helping out. And good deal. Um, you know, there's other other vendors are going to be there. You know, uh, y'all's more than welcome to come up too if you want. You know, uh, well, we might think about it. I uh, mean, uh, I've ne- I this is the first I've heard of White Horse. So, well, see, there's yeah. there's people that live in Buck Cannon, and they've never heard of. It. Wow. I mean, it, it's it's really a hidden gem. Yeah. And uh, it is it's an old strip mine, you know, and it's. Nice. It, it's it's That'd awesome, cool. man. It, it is. It really is. It's an awesome place. Yeah. There's um, there's also another uh, outfit there that is. Um, it's called Brass Masters, and they shoot metallic silhouette with pistols. Okay. Um, they do that, and there's cowboy action shooting. Oh, uh, nice. Th- there also. Yeah. So. I, Something I, for everybody. There, yeah, there's the calendar is full. Our our calendar year is full every weekend. There there's something right going, going on, on yeah. at Whitehorse. That's good. But now this this big match that's coming up in on Labor Day weekend is, um, I guess you would say, there'll be people there from 40 states, and the wow. last in <laughs> in, in in 2017. Um, we had the nationals there, and there was 119 shooters in it. And you think 119 shooters—that's really not very much. Uh, well, most of the 119 people shoot two classes, so that's two guns. Well, it's a—I um, mean, it's kind of expensive to yeah. get in a match, but um, you know. Of course, I've been elected as uh, to be over the prize table, and you know, uh, with my right arm, my wife. She's sitting here watching us. Uh, <laughs> she's uh, really helped because uh, my eye problems and stuff like that. I, I can't really see real well right now, but yeah, uh, you know, contacting these vendors, and 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 these vendors are, um, we're. I guess you would say we're at their mercy. Um, a lot of the vendors don't come, and I wish they would. I, I have invited them to come, and I wish they would would come and and see. And I, whenever I got into the shooting sports, I didn't understand because I thought, you know, that have a big event like this, they should all be there. Yeah. Well, they'll just be only a, a couple, and I understand that they go to shot show and they go yeah. to all these places. And I I understand it's a lot of expense, Mm -hmm. but the shooter, whether he's a weekend warrior or whether he's a weekday warrior, whether he's a deer hunter, he's a groundhog hunter, he's a a competition shooter, they buy their products. Yeah. And, um, And for the most part, they send stuff for the price table. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some that decline well you know that that really hurts them uh uh i mean uh no, no matter what and i understand they're they're just like everybody else they're on a tight but everybody lives payday to payday i don't know about y'all but that's that, that's the way it, it seems is. like to be that <laughs> in nowadays no, time I, 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 I live i yeah. live from dollar to dollar i don't live paycheck to paycheck yeah. you know yeah. you get a pay raise and then you get a debt raise <laughs> no, no, I have to raise your interest. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you, real go ahead, quick. Go ahead. Uh, this this might be a little side subject, but uh, what's your favorite round for for long range like that, like out to a thousand yards? Well, I'm I'm really the wrong guy to ask that. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. Cut, if it goes bang, I like it. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. But, but yeah. probably my favorite round. Um, I have two. And one is a six millimeter dasher round. Never even heard of that. Never, one. never heard of. I, and I, I'm sure it, what it is is a uh, it's a six br, which is six bench rest. Okay. That is um, improved. Basically, is what a, a six a six dasher is. It's a it's a improved okay. cartridge, and it gives about two or three more grains of powder. 
Yeah. And um, in in what we do, we shoot for group and score, and it's unbelievable what what has been done here in the last few years in the shooting sports. You know. Um, Just really fine tuning that accuracy, or oh, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the the world record was broke at a thousand. It's been about four or five years ago. Um, a guy shot five shots at one point one inch at, at a thousand <laughs> oh at, at, a, at a thousand yards with a fifty score with five X's. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, from a thousand yards. Okay, the six hundred yard uh, world record was shot about the same amount of time ago, and it was uh, it was like point two five eight inch it, spread. Yeah, point two five. So he's shooting a. 24 caliber bullet for 243 thousandths diameter and he shoots a 258 good lord that's so, just so he, so he and 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 what it, what these guys do is they take a sharpie and they mark the ends of their bullets with different colors that way they know whenever the bullet goes through the paper how you know is you take alcohol and drop on it, and it'll tell you every color that's been through that hole. Really? Huh. That's pretty smart. That is. Uh, I've it, never it, even it, thought it, of that, that. That color bleeds out into the paper on the back side. Yeah. And you can tell, you know, yeah. if they're just shooting one huh. hole and they just quit. And <laughs> now in short range, they have what's called a target backer that, that it moves in behind the target moves back and forwards while they're shooting. Yeah, at at one, two, and three hundred yards. Nice. That, that's how that's done, and it's eventually going to come to that in in six hundred yards because people are uh, they're threading the needle, getting too good. And, uh, oh, man. You know, it's it's yeah. it's an addiction. I mean, um, I mean, if you're a quarter inch spread at six hundred yards with a two forty three, wow, that's good. That's crazy. I mean, I can't even imagine. Well, I've never tried shooting that far. Well, <laughs> I, I tell you what, what got this started, and and I don't, I don't, you know, how how hunting got started for me, how shooting got started for me. I just I'll just back up. I, I'll I'll take us down that hole if you don't mind. No, go ahead. I. I was kind of afraid gun, of guns. When I was growing up, my dad wouldn't allow, allow us to have a BB gun. My dad hunted, but he wouldn't allow us to have a BB gun because his best friend got his eye shot out. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. uh, you know, he figured, you know, when we got, you know, 17 or 18 years old, then you can learn to go hunt. Well... I wanted to. Get, I wanted, my brother was wanting to go hunting. I wanted to go hunting. Well, my papa took my brother. So, sometimes I was littler. So sometimes I'd get a go, and I'd just end up messing up the whole hunt for them, you know, because I was littler. <laughs> yeah. But but I had an uncle that um, he was an honor guard at Arlington Cemetery. And you want to talk about straight? Oh, I will guarantee it. You got to be straight to be an honor guard at Arlington. Yeah, okay? you do. So, I asked him, "Is time to go deer hunting?" This was, uh, I'm going to say, 1980. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of deer around this, these parts here in 1980. You know, it hadn't been very long. They had opened up the season here to go deer hunting. Well, anyway, what huh. what what transpired was I, I asked my uncle if um, if he had a gun I could use. Yeah, I got a gun you can use. Okay, so we all, you know, there's 20 people lined up, gets in the back of his truck, and we go out the ridge, you know, and I'm sitting in the middle of a Chevy truck, and there's four of us in the cab. <laughs> and I'm sitting there scrunched up, you know, and the gear shift hit me in the knee. Yeah. Just glad to be gone. Yeah. 
So I'm the last guy to get out with my humble. I said, uh, get the rifles out here behind the seat, you know, single cab truck, pull the seat up. There's only one gun back there. I said, is this my gun? He said, no, that's mine. I said, where's mine at? He said, yours is that broom handle. And I said, what? I said, I could kill a deer with a broom handle. He said, well, let me tell you something, son. You're, I don't know how your gun handling skills are, so you're not going to accidentally shoot me. So he made me hunt and carry around a broom handle for two days. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, And I swear it's the truth. And he said, you point that broom handle at me. Uh, We're going to have problems. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use it on you. <laughs> you know, my, my oh, uncle, he, you know, at the time, I wasn't as big as I am now. You know, he's, yeah. he's six four and he weighed 200 pounds, and he was 31 inches around the waist. You know, he was... You know he's in his fifties, and he was he he still looked like he was in in the service. Yeah, I mean that's just the way he, he was put together. Wow. And he and he was adamant on gun safety. Gun safety. I mean yeah. to the to the core. So that that ingrained into my head, and um, that yeah you know, that's really a, a a drastic thing, but. If it didn't really sunk in, you know, because I'm I'm really big on that. Yeah, well, if he hadn't yeah. have done it that way, it wouldn't have stuck with you. you I, know? I, I mean, you know, you, you tell somebody about that, and, and they're like, well, I wouldn't have done that for a minute. I wouldn't have carried around no broom handle. Well. He done it for a reason. He done it for a reason. And it not only just showed me, because there's 20 guys sitting in the back end of this Chevy four wheel drive truck. They knew it. Yeah, they seen me with the broom handle in my hand. Uh, they wasn't making fun either because <laughs> uh, he was serious. You yeah. know. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, that that's that's how that got started, and then I kind of got away from it for a while, and got to playing sports, and and uh, I guess being the the jock and all that kind of stuff and that got me a, a long way i got hurt and i hurt all over now because of it so uh i didn't i worked on cars all the time and stuff that's what that's what i done I, I just got burnt out on it and i become a police officer um i've been a police officer for 30 years wow getting ready to retire got 60 days to go yeah nice uh, congratulations oh, wow. yeah congrats on that um and i'm a different kind of police officer i'm the i'm a dot officer i'm the big truck police i just deal with commercial motor vehicles okay so i it's a i'm not saying that it's not less important but what i'm saying is i i deal with different things yeah mm-hmm. right right uh, you know i deal with hazmat i deal with oh yeah you know overweight yep you know all those all those all that stuff, you know, safety, you know, log books, log all that. books, yeah. So that that's that's what I do. A lot of federal regulations there too. Uh, oh, it's it's uh, uh, whenever <laughs> there's retired officers from other departments, you know, they get their twenty years in with other department, and then they come to work for us. Yeah, and they go and take all the tests that we take, and they're like. I had no idea that y'all enforced all this. Yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> they, they didn't have no idea because yeah. you know if a if a police officer, whether he's county, city, or state, or whatever, pull a, a vehicle over, he pulls a vehicle over. He's got to have calls. Mm-hmm. Right. DOT officer does not. He can pull any truck over anytime he wants at random. Yeah. For just to check a log or to just, just anything placards anything it, exactly yeah. right yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, that's pretty crazy I didn't know that yeah it, it's we're one of the only agencies in the country that can can do that without you know calls you know mm-hmm. but uh, for the most part you know I I've had uh, I can count on two hands in thirty years 
it, it going kind of bad there for a while. Oh, okay. So, so I think that's pretty good. Yeah, for, that is. Uh, speaking for myself, because I took pride in treating people like I want to be treated. Yeah, that's good. My mom and dad, my uncles, they, they taught me that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's a... That's just that's good. That that's the, that's just me. Uh, that's good. That's real good. And yeah. and also, and I and I don't mean to to take up so much of your all's time, but no, you're good. The I was talking about you know the gun safety thing. Um, you know, my uncle teaching me. I I was doing some concealed carry classes there for a while. Uh, done a lot. I've showed a lot of people how to shoot. Um, my department kind of farmed me out to State Police Academy, and I've helped on the range at the State Police Academy, and I, I learned so much there. Um, you know, uh, uh, how to be a, a farms instructor. Uh, I've I've helped teach uh, uh, the firearms instructor classes that they teach, how to teach people to be a firearms instructor. Right, right. And, you know, everybody thinks it's just, you know, you just step right in and, and do it. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah. It's, be, being a firearms instructor is, uh, you know, whenever there's 25 people on, on the line at one time with a gun, uh the head farms instructor is tickled <laughs> to death whenever he's got help. Yeah. I because, bet. Because yeah. It, I mean, you know, some of these new police officers that, you know, are going through the academy and stuff, they don't, they've never even picked up a gun. Oh, they're, my they're gosh. Go, and they're going to become a police officer. Yeah. Which sometimes is good. Yeah. You know, they don't have no bad habits. Yeah. But, right, but sometimes true. they got no habits that they, it's just, it's it's really hard to teach, but once you get them taught, that you know it's it's good, you know. Yeah, that's good. So, but um, the the thing about teaching people to shoot, I got I got involved in con, doing concealed carry classes, and I helped with um, uh, a it was a gun store down in Logan, and uh, the city of Logan. There was a gun store there, and they. I would go in there a lot, you know, at lunchtime. I'd work in that area a lot, and I'd go in there at lunchtime and talk to them. And uh, just got to talking there one day, and I said, y'all ever think about doing a, a, you know, handgun safety class, you know? No, never thought about it. I said, why don't you, <laughs> why don't you do it? You know, yeah. I said, I'll do it. You know, uh, I said, if I don't have a gun, I can buy a gun off of you. <laughs> yeah, you know, there you go. go. You yeah, know, I mean, you that's know, right. It's a good marketing thing. I uh, mean, if you own a gun store, let's do some safety. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, right. I, I done that, and we had a kind of a thing just like this where we're at right now. Yeah. You know, this uh, vendors' day. They had it at the um, Earl Ray Tomlin uh, Convention Center there, right outside of Logan. Okay. Yeah. And I was helping the gun store there. I was behind the table, and they had, you know, 50 guns there, maybe more than that. Guy steps up with his son, his best friend. I'm going to say he's 13 years old. And the, guy, the dad's sitting there. He's working up a deal. He's getting ready to buy a gun, you know. Uh, so while this is going on, you know, I see this boy there, you know, 13 years old, him and his buddy. He's just sitting there. Just mouth water, you know. He's want, he's <laughs> want wanting to touch one. Yeah, he's wanting to touch one. He's uh -huh. wanting to get a hold of one. I said, <laughs> I said, would you like to pick up that gun? He said, Yep. I said, Will you ask your dad if it's okay? He said, Hey, Dad, can I pick up this gun? He said, Well, if it's okay with them, yeah, go ahead, pick it up. As soon as he picked it up, he stuck it right at his best friend and and said, Pow! To his best friend. Oh man! Pointed the gun right at him, and right then, I knew. Right then, I had to do something. Wow! So, I got involved with, uh, and I know several of the DNR officers. I started teaching the hunter safety class. Yeah. And 
I was doing that, and I had a rifle team uh, for youth shooters, um, and I was doing, I was just doing too much. I had son playing ball, I had a girl uh, cheerleading, and I was just doing too much. Not plus, I was shooting competitively, and I, I, I stopped the rifle team. I stopped the hunter's ed. I stopped doing the concealed carry stuff. I was just, I was just, it was nonstop doing it. Yep. And while I was doing this, I was doing the the bench rest shooting. And my mentor, his name's J.C. Gerald. He's the president of White Horse. I was at a match one day, and he was shooting at a match. And I looked. And I saw, uh, I saw his rifle on him. He, I didn't really know him, and I saw his rifle. And and I said, "Do you mind if I get down behind your gun and look through the scope, look at your rifle?" He says, "No, uh, uh-uh. you want shooting?" I was like, "No, that's okay. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I, no, I don't want to do that." He <laughs> said. I'll tell you what. He said, when everybody clears out here, I like to shoot him. <laughs> so, everybody cleared out. He let me shoot him. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a, uh, there's a good friend of mine. There was a, um, we shoot, we shoot three inch clay birds. And on the ground like to practice and, and that's our ciders for when we go to record to shoot okay. in, in a match Yeah. but this is before I started even doing that started shooting matches and I shot a clay bird 3 inch clay bird on a dirt bank at 600 yards and I was <sighs> like wow <laughs> this, this is the this it's is, on now it's the greatest this is awesome yeah. I've never shot that far before and hit something that small you know and I was always a deer hunter and and groundhog hunter my buddy he mm-hmm. he'd take me to the groundhog fields and, and shoot groundhogs you know and sometimes you know we'd shoot groundhogs out a long way yeah but I if I ever shot one that far I, at the time, that was back before really you could get a range finder. And now people won't let you groundhog hunt. People won't hardly let you hunt yeah. because people do stupid stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah that's right. And uh, so the shooting the clay bird at 600 yards is really what. That got you hooked, didn't it? Well, I tell I tell everybody that starts shooting, gets into shooting, there's, there's two ways to hook a fish and there's like just look at me real funny what do you mean two ways to hook a fish we're talking about hunt i mean talking about shooting i said well when you're fishing and you hook a bass in the lip he can get off he can flip that hook out but i said when you gut hook him he ain't getting off yeah <laughs> unless he breaks the line and you better have some good line so you don't have to worry about that yeah so I guess I was gut hooked after that. <laughs> <laughs> could not get off. Yeah, I could, hear you. I yeah. could not. I could not get off. You know? <laughs> so it, it's uh, uh. It, it's been a. Th- that's been my, I guess you would say, process up to now, and and like I said, there. I, I've I've enjoyed my my mom told me, whenever I was younger, she said enjoy yourself while you're young because when you get old you're not going to be able to enjoy yourself as much mm-hmm. so, and yeah. I've and I've really enjoyed myself and and um, you know it, and my son and and my nephews have I've instilled into them what was instilled into me to the 10th power and you know, now my son he works here at Cabela's in in the bow section. Okay. Building bows, you know, working on bows, loves it. He has now um, he started working on guns uh, because he missed a bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 
I helped him build a rifle for himself. Uh, you know, before I had my eye surgery and everything, I was I was in it all the way, guys. I'm all or nothing. I was yeah. I, I was uh, thread. I have my own lathe. I was threading and chambering barrels for whatever cartridge I wanted to shoot. You know, I weigh my brass. I weigh my powder. Uh-huh. I weigh I weigh my primers. I weigh my bullets uh, and sort them all by weight and wow. and all that kind of stuff. That's how you shoot one inch groups at a thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that, for sure. And yeah, I, I just I just love to shoot. And everybody that saw me shoot at the academy and stuff, they they saw me shooting pistols, and I and I, you know, I'm not a pistol competitor. I can shoot a pistol. I'm kind of like Quigley, you know, Quigley. He, yeah. <laughs> you remember in the movie, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I really, if it goes bang, I like it. I tell people I shoot pistols while my rifle's cooling off. <laughs> the barrel's too, the barrel, the, the barrel too hot to touch, so I just grab the pistol and shoot the pistol. Yeah. While, but I haven't shot in uh, in a year because I, I've had a eye dis- I have an eye disease and had uh, cornea transplant three times. Wow. And before I had this eye problem, I had twenty over five vision. That's what aircraft fighter pilots have and snipers in the Marine Corps. That's what they want. They want yeah. you to be able to see that good and yeah. and be able to see so many degrees, you know, mm-hmm. on the left and right of you. But um, that is uh, one of the reasons why uh, I, I, could, I could see good. Yeah. And, you, and you have to see good. I mean, it, it's, yeah. uh, it's just the way it is. I mean, and now I can't uh, since I've had the surgery, I can, I can see a little bit out of that eye. Uh, I can look through a scope and I can see the the crosshairs, but just for a second, and then it just washes out. Wow! But um, I'm getting there. My I'm the poster child for my eye doctor. He, <laughs> he, he's he done cataract surgery on me whenever I was uh, 47. Uh, my cataracts were that bad at 47, so I had to have cataract surgery. Wow. And after he'd done it, my vision was 20 over 5. So I could see a gnat on a fence post. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah. I mean. That's crazy. I, I, it, it's. Uh, yeah. But I want to I give a plug here to, to the, uh, the president of Whitehorse, J.C. Gerald. He, it's unbelievable what kind of mentor he is. Uh, not just to me, but so many people, um, and and not just not just him. You know, there's people in 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 my family. You know, I had a cousin. I had two cousins, their husbands, that took me deer hunting and stuff. And he told they told me he said, if you're if you're going to go deer hunting, you're going to have to learn how to shoot. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to learn how to shoot. Well, I said, well, how do I learn how to shoot? Buy you a 22 rifle and shoot it. If you want to become a better shot, buy you a 22 rifle and shoot it till it don't work no more. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. Yeah. I, I took I took in some scrap metal to the scrap place and cashed in a bunch of aluminum holes and brass holes and stuff that I can't reload, you know? Yeah. And I got there in the truck and get in the back end of the truck and I pull out a five gallon bucket full of 22 holes. <laughs> a five gallon bucket full of 22 holes. That's a lot. Do, do you know how much five gallon bucket of 22 holes weighs? I... 85 pounds. I was going to say 100. 85, of course, it was down that much Yeah, in the bucket, but 85 pounds. Wow. And I forget what I got out of it. You know, it was uh, everything that I cashed in, I got like four or $500, you know, but those 22 shells, 95% of them, I shot them in within two years. Yeah. 
uh, out of a pistol, out of a rifle. You know, they they used to aggravate me at the academy because every time I'd pour everybody it ain't to shoot, I'd holler front sight because that's what you got to look at. Mm. Yeah, the last that's thing, right. It's the last thing you better look at is front sight. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's me. I'm a I'm a gun guy. I just like to shoot. Like to show people how to shoot. Teach people how to shoot. Uh, there's a difference between showing and teaching. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, we're definitely glad that you are still teaching people and, you know, in the education of, you know, teaching these kids how to shoot. Because if there were more education like this, I think there would be less problems. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. the, you that, know? I think that's the problem with... Uh, the gun violence that we have today the, is yes. there's, there's no education there. That's exactly right. There's not enough education the, there. So the, Whenever I was in school... There is, but there's not enough. That's yeah. what I mean, you know. Whenever I was in school, you took the hunter safety class in gym class. That's what we were talking about on our last episode. <laughs> a, a lot of the education departments and or, or counties, they'll let you do it, but it's got to be an after school thing mm-hmm. yeah. or something like that. And and this archery in the school program, that's one of the best things that I've ever heard tell of. Yeah, I I remember. Whenever I was in junior high, they would be guys in high school that was taking gym class, and they were shooting 22s during gym class. And I'm 54 years old, so now they're 58, uh, 59. They were shooting 22s in gym class. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would have been, yeah. yeah. That, that's Man. that's what went on. Yeah. And this is the this is the deal. What what got my nephew involved in it? He was the uh, uh, 1,000-yard F-class state champion uh, at 16 years old um, because of my buddy J.C. mentoring him and showing him how to shoot and me mm-hmm. helping, you know, yeah. getting him there. He just took him to the next step. That's awesome. And uh, he, they made fun of him. Uh, in school, he didn't play sports. He didn't play football. He didn't play basketball. Didn't play soccer. He didn't do none of that stuff. Despised that stuff. All them guys that made fun of him, whenever he, they found out he was a thousand yard state champion, and then they found out he was a six hundred yard regional champion. Mm-hmm. And there was a big article in the newspaper about him in the Sunday Gazette. Everybody was like, "You done that, Weston?" Yeah. And it was, you know, before they was making fun of him, calling him, you know, sissy and all this kind of stuff because he didn't, he didn't play sports. Uh, well, but he was involved in sports. Just right. different. This he, was different. Yeah, sport. I, I, just a different just, sport. Yeah, he didn't say nothing about <laughs> he, it. He loved them guns. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, he is. Well, he works at Douglas Barrel now. Oh, awesome! <laughs> nice. He, he works at. He's a guy who drills the hole out in the middle of it. Heck it's yeah. a shootout, though. Yeah, that that's that's how much he's been involved. That's awesome. That's great. Right. Well, Chris, we sure appreciate you coming on and let, giving us a little insight on what White Horse is and what it does. And like I said, I didn't even know about it, but we we thank you for coming on and talking about it. I appreciate it a whole bunch, guys. Yeah, tell tell people where they can get a hold of you guys. Give them phone number, website, and things like that. Um, you can get a hold of us on Facebook. It's White Horse Shooting and Outdoor. Uh, education center uh, Facebook page uh, email uh, call me as vice president or the president if you need to know any information glad to help any way we okay. can alright thank you guys appreciate it alright thank you thank you for listening to this segment we've got uh, Jeremy Allen coming up next with uh, Whitetail Properties so we're going to take a little break here maybe get us some Hunt Chef food Dave's ate I haven't ate so <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. You don't eat. want none of that. Just leave that for me. <laughs> I gotta go get me some brisket. <laughs> so I'm gonna get me some brisket, and we'll be right back after a word from one of our partners. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 
This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Outdoor Pro Shop, LLC. Outdoor Pro Shop is a family-owned and operated firearms dealer and sporting goods retailer. They have pay-over-time options, a rewards program, and customer service satisfaction that is unmatched. They might not be the biggest, but they strive to be the best. Contact them today at 240-360-1298 or visit them on the web at www.outdoor-pro-shop.com. That's Outdoor Pro Shop, 240 340 360 1298.